What we have here is a Lock and Var EPB 150N that had a recall for the flu collar plate, which I've already installed, which is this silver piece right down, down here. Now, do read the instruction manuals for this uh, recall um, to make sure you're going through the steps properly. This is just kind of a post-op to give some guys a little bit more confidence out there in the field that this isn't as overwhelming as it may appear. So boiler drain down, gas turned off, electric turned off first. So the system is ready to go, drain it down, nothing in it. Um, you can open up these in your relief valve if you so wish to make sure that the entire thing is drained out. Once you've done that, you're going to remove all the screws around the top panel, disconnect your venting, disconnect your relief valve. You're going to disconnect your exhaust vent and then you're going to I would take these four screws out, which I don't find is any use because when you remove this entire panel, it will actually come out and pull the flu collar, which is ran at the back there and runs down into the uh, vent collector at the bottom. It just pulls out. So, and you're going to set that aside. So you're going to have this entire opening open. Then you're going to remove your interface. You're going to remove your control board, pulling all the convenient wire connectors apart, make a note if you must, uh, make a note of where all your uh, low voltage wires are connected. Um, they could be all different configurations to what this is, so do not go based on what these color codes are. Um, put them aside, that will then give you full access to this. This bar up here, I find it's easy to re if you remove that once you've got this all apart to get the heat exchanger out. Because you're gonna disconnect that nut and the one that's down in there and then that whole heat exchanger is gonna lift up and out. There are two bolts at the back that you're gonna to need to get to when this lid is off that hold the heat exchanger in place. Again, relatively easy. I think there are two half inch or seven sixteenths uh, nuts. Disconnect them, pull them out. The heat exchanger then lifts up, turn it a little bit, and it will just come right out with this bar removed. If you leave the bar in, you're gonna find your, you're gonna be fighting between where the venom motor and the condensate drain hits. And that's another note is obviously you will have to disconnect your condensate uh, from it underneath. That's what this little puddle over here is. Um, so that's disconnected Then the heat exchanger will pull up, pull out, take it to somewhere on the floor or on a bench. The plate putting on the bottom is three easy screws. You, you put it on and then you're gonna reverse everything that you've did, you've done. Obviously, put the heat exchanger in, start reconnecting the top panel, start reconnecting all your electrical connections. Time frame took me about an hour, hour and a half. Um, this is the first one that I've done. Um, not that big of a deal. Seems a little bit overwhelming when you you got all these connectors to disconnect. But fortunately, as a good manufacturer, those plugs are specific to each one. So you really can't mess it up because they, they only fit in, in one orientation and in one location. Um, the only thing I would say in my notes, there's a few spots in, in the uh, description of a few of the wiring harnesses they didn't tell you to disconnect that clearly you would have to disconnect in order to get the heat exchanger out. So just keep an, keep an eye on that. But again, pretty straightforward, uh, about an hour and a half. Uh, total time on site. Of course, that doesn't include your travel time. Uh, Lock and Var are doing a uh, um, a recall on this, so you will get re reimbursed uh, for your time. It's a set amount. I won't discuss that on here, obviously. Um, but yeah, good luck. I hope this helps somebody out there, but it's not as uh, as bad as it seems.